हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर नमिता वर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हल्द्वानी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अ लेक्चर ऑन द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इज अ मॉनेटरी सिस्टम वेर अ कंट्रीज करेंसी और पेपर मनी हैज़ अ वैल्यू डायरेक्टली लिंक्ड टू गोल्ड विद द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड कंट्रीज एग्रीड to convert paper money into a fixed amount of gold a country that uses the gold standard sets a fixed price for gold and buys and sells gold at that price historically there have been different forms of gold standard they are number 1 gold coin standard number 2 gold bullion standard number 3 gold exchange standard number 4 gold reserve standard number 5 gold parity standard now let us talk about the gold standard first gold standard is a monetary system in which the standard unit of currency is a fixed quantity of gold and is kept at the value of a fixed quantity of gold the currency is freely convertible at home or abroad into a fixed amount of gold per unit of currency gold coin standard according to crowther a currency system in which gold coins either form the whole circulation or else circulate equally with notes is known as the gold is also known as the full gold standard gold coin standard or gold currency standard or gold species standard is the oldest form of gold standard it is also known as orthodox gold standard or traditional gold standard this standard was prevalent in the uk france germany and the usa before the world war 1 gold coin standard is also regarded as full gold standard because under this standard full bodied standard coins made of gold were circulated other forms of money are redeemable into gold Now let us talk about the features of gold coin. Monetary unit is defined in terms of gold. For example, before World War One, sovereign was the standard coin in the UK. Its weight was one twenty three point one seven four four seven grains with eleven oblique twelve purity. Other forms of money, for example, token coins and paper money. are also in circulation but they are convertible into gold coinage is unlimited and free of cost there is free and unlimited melting of gold coins the government buys and sells gold at fixed prices and thereby maintains parity between the face value and intrinsic value of the standard coin there is free import and export of gold gold is unlimited legal tender for all types of payments all values are expressed in terms of gold merit of gold coin standard the gold coin system has the following advantages number 1 public confidence since the standard coin is made of gold it is universally acceptable thus gold coin standard enjoys full confidence of the public number 2 automatic working it is automatic in working and needs no government intervention money supply depends upon the volume of gold reserves and money supply can be changed in accordance with the changes in the volume of gold reserves number 3 it has price stability since There are no frequent changes in the supply of gold. The system ensures reasonable degree of internal price stability. Number 4, its exchange stability. Free and unrestricted import and export of gold under gold coin standard ensures stability in foreign exchange rates. This promotes international trade. Number 5, is its simplicity it is the simplest form of gold standard which can be easily understood by the common people 
Now let us talk about the demerits of gold coin standard. Gold coin standard also suffers from the following defects. Number one, fair weather standard. It is fair weather standard. It operates smoothly during peace time but fails to work properly and to inspire public confidence at the time of economic crisis. Number two, wastage of gold. There is great deal of wastage of gold under this standard. Circulation of gold coins suffers depreciation. Moreover, since paper currency is fully backed by gold, gold remains idle while in reserves. Number three, it's not automatic. Gold coin standard operates automatically with the cooperation of the participating countries. After World War I, in the absence of international cooperation, this standard ceased to be automatic in its functioning. Number four, is its price stability unreal? Under this system, internal price stability is unreal. Various factors like discoveries of new gold mines, changes in the techniques of production of gold, changes in imports and exports of gold leads to change in the price of the gold and hence causes fluctuations in the internal prices. Number five, it is less effective. Gold currency standard is not the only standard for achieving the objective of price and exchange stability. Critics points out that a managed currency system is more effective in ensuring stability in internal price level and external exchange rate. Number five, deflation oriented. Mrs. John Robinson regards gold coin standard as deflation oriented because the gold losing countries will compulsory reduce the currency, thus generating deflation while the gold receiving countries generally do not expand the currency, thus generating inflation. Number six is gold bullion standard. After World War I, gold standard was reviewed in some countries of Euro, not on gold currency basis, but on gold bullion basis. It was adapted by Great Britain in 1925 Gold bullion standard is a modified version of gold coin standard in which there was no gold coinage and the currency is convertible into gold bullion. For example, gold bars. Now let us talk about the features of gold bullion standards. Number one, gold coins are not in circulation, but the standard currency unit is expressed in terms of a definite quantity of gold of a given fineness. Thus, gold does not act as a medium of exchange, but it remains a measure of value. Number two, coinage of gold is not allowed. People can't get their gold converted into coins at a mint. Number three, other forms of money, paper money and token coins are not fully backed by gold reserves, but the government guarantees full convertibility of currency into gold bullion. Number four, the government is always ready to buy and sell gold at fixed prices. For example, in England during 1925 to 1931, the currency was exchangeable for gold bars of 400 ounces, each worth about 1560. Fifth, there are no restrictions on export and import of gold. Now let us talk about the merits of gold bullion standards. The gold bullion standard has the following merits. Number one, economy in the use of gold. The use of gold, gold coins are not in circulation and there is no wastage of the precious metal. Moreover, there is no 100% gold backing of note issues. Number two, use of gold in public interest. Since under gold bullion standard, 
All gold is not kept idle in reserves. It can be properly utilized for public purposes. Number three is automatic working. Like the gold currency standard, the gold bullion standard also operates automatically. If demand for money falls, people will start buying gold from the government. As a result, gold reserves and thus the money supply will fall will fall. In this way, equilibrium in the demand and supply of money will be established and hence price stability is ensured. Number four is its exchange stability. Since there is unrestricted import and export of gold, stability in the exchange rate is easily maintained under this standard. Number five is its elastic money supply. Since under the system, the currency is not fully convertible, the monetary authority can expand adequate money supply by a small increase in gold reserves. Number six is public confidence. Since government is always ready to convert token money and paper money into gold, at a fixed price, the gold bullion standard inspires public confidence. Gold bullion standard is easy to understand and economical in functioning. Therefore, it does not inspire much public confidence. Number three is it is not automatic. This standard does not work automatically and needs active government intervention. It may be more appropriately called a managed standard. Then it is inflation oriented. Under the system, money supply can be increased easily because it is very difficult to reduce money supply. Hence, it is prone to inflation. Number five, it is expensive. This system is not at all economical. To make it work, the government has to keep many reserves which involves lots of expenditure. It is due to its expensive nature that India abandoned this system on the recommendation of Hilton Young Commission. Number six is monetary dependence. Under this standard, the monetary independence of a country can't adopt an independent monetary policy, but has to be governed by the policy of the foreign countries. Number seven is its external insecurity. Since under this standard, the domestic currency of a country is linked with the foreign currency, the insecurity and instability of the foreign currency makes the monetary system of the related country insecure and unstable. Gold reserve standard after the breakdown of gold standard a new monetary system called Gold Reserve Standard was developed in 1936, mainly to ensure stability in exchange rates. In 1936, Great Britain, the USA, the France entered into a tripartite monetary agreement according to which free flow of gold or foreign currency was allowed to stabilize exchange rates and promote foreign trade without affecting the internal value of the domestic currency. For this purpose, exchange equalization funds were created. The gold reserve standard functioned successfully for three years in and came to an end with the outbreak of World War II. Now, what are the features of gold reserve standard? The essential features of the gold reserve standards are Number one, no link with gold. Under this standard, now let's talk about the gold parity standard. In essence, gold parity standard is the modern version of the gold standard. It came into force with the establishment of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in 1946. Under this standard, every member country has to define the power value of its currency in terms of gold in order to determine the exchange rates. The gold parity standard aims at maintaining stable exchange rates without interfering 
into the domestic monetary system of the member countries. Now let us talk about the basic features of the gold parity standard. Number one, no link with gold. Under this standard, gold is neither a medium exchange nor a measure of value. The domestic country compromises paper money and token coins of cheaper metals. The domestic country is inconvertible into gold coins or gold bars or foreign currency. Number two is par value of money. Every member country has to define the par values of its money in terms of gold. The par value of different countries further determines the exchange rates of foreign transactions. Number three, exchange rate flexibility. This standard allows reasonable flexibility in the exchange rates because the member nations can alter the par values of the currencies under the regulation of the IMF. Number four is provision of loans. Under the system, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, provides loans in foreign currencies to the member countries to ensure stability in foreign exchange rates. Number five, independent monetary policy. Under this standard, the member nations can allow independent monetary policy in the domestic affairs. The monetary policy of one country has no direct or indirect link with the monetary policy of another country. That's all for today. Thank you so much.